We also have a question about how an alpine fault earthquake could impact our coastal populations down here in the South Island. So Matt asks, what will be the impacts to major coastal population areas in New Zealand following an alpine fault quake? Caroline um, Augustin, what does the AF8 hazard scenario tell us about potential impacts to the South Island's coastal populations? Yeah, Matt, that's a really, really great question. Um, I, I would start by saying that um, when you're thinking about sort of coastlines, you know, dune areas, uh, low-lying sort of silty, sandy kind of sediments, mm. like there's likely to be significant ground shaking that will generate liquefaction. So I think we all are familiar with, with what liquefaction is in terms of the ejection of, 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 uh, of fluid and, and sand out of the ground. And we saw a lot of that after the Christchurch earthquakes. And there are people on this call that are absolute experts in liquefaction. So if they want to talk more about that, then go ahead. Um, I guess the other thing is, you know, we often think of coastlines and big earthquakes and we worry about tsunami. And with the Alpine Fault scenario that the AFA science team uh, put together a few years ago, um, tsunami, tsunami wasn't one of the hazards that we were anticipating. And that's because the Alpine Fault is, for the most part, on land. It doesn't go offshore or off the coast until way down in Milford Sound. So there is potential for a localised tsunami event down in the Milford Sound area, which could, could impact Milford Sound itself. But in terms of the, the rest of the West Coast um, coastline, unlikely to generate a, a significant tsunami event. I'd, I'd probably bring in, um, in terms of other physical you know, hazards uh, generated by this earthquake, um, the, the sort of need to think about lake margins and, margins and rivers, because of course, there are lots of lake, alpine lakes around the West Coast, and we'd want to make sure that, again, people are, are aware of the, the need to move away from lake margins. Um, there's, there are two different things that could happen around lakes. Firstly, what's known as a seiche wave, which is essentially a sloshing effect where the lake margin sloshes with the movement of the ground motion. And the second one is the potential for a rockfall tsunami into, the, into a lake, which could generate quite a significant sort of rockfall tsunami event within um, lakes around the, the Southern Alps. Um, I, I guess the other thing to think about are, are the sort of impacts and consequences on our communities is the question actually asked. <laughs> um, West Coast, you know, um, anything that's sitting on liquefiable ground, for example, roads or bridges or buildings, are going to uh, feel the effects of that. And so it's a potential um, impacts on bridge approaches, the bridges themselves, and the ability then for the, this earthquake to isolate communities up and down the West Coast. So, you know, unable, you know, people not being able to cross bridges and get around the way we, we like to be able to get around. So the potential for isolation of communities on the West Coast is quite a significant um, thing.